Hello, all the way over there. I'm trying a new camera angle. Today's video is gonna be a more slowed down step-by-step uh, -step process of how I did the visual effects from the Thor video, or at least one shot anyway. We're gonna go over this shot here. This is one of my favorites from the video. Uh, a few people said they thought it was very convincing, which I was very flattered by, obviously. It's always nice to hear that you tricked someone into thinking that this is real. So essentially what's going on in this shot, we have obviously Mjolnir, some object tracking, the bowling pins are there, that's literally just a still frame, not gonna really go over how to do that, pretty simple. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is object tracking Mjolnir and um, doing the lightning, which I'll also go over because I didn't touch on that in the breakdown. First thing is first, object tracking, the hammer. Let's go to the movie clip editor. So to bring in your footage, um, I exported a JPEG sequence from Nuke so that I can bring it into Blender and use it as a background image. Let's do the, not the background plate, but the undistorted plate, which is the one we want. Open clip. So press set scene frames and then prefetch, which is gonna load it into your RAM. You wanna put in your camera details and your lens information. Thankfully, due to my very well drawn storyboards that I labeled with all of my focal lengths, I know this was shot at 50 millimeters. So you come over here, uh, my camera has a 35.6 millimeter sensor and I know that the lens was a 50 millimeter lens because I wrote that down. Then what you wanna do is go to the objects tab and at the moment it's gonna do a camera track. We wanna do an object track. So if you press the plus button, it will add an object and then you can start adding your tracking points and start doing your object tracking. As you can see, I touched on this in the last video. I made this very beautiful Mjolnir out of a uh, few Domino's pizza boxes that I taped together. So at this point, what you wanna do is start adding some tracking markers and you need eight tracking markers throughout the whole shot for the uh, tracking to kind of be able to calculate properly. Let's go for this one slap bang in the middle first. I'm gonna hold control and click and that will add this uh, tracker. By default, it might look like this. I think mine did the first time. If you press Alt S, it will show the search box. So this middle box is the actual kind of, is what's meant to contain the tracking marker. And you can scale the whole thing by pressing S to change the size. And the search box is basically the computer analyzing the area around the tracking marker and kind of seeing where it's moving in relation to everything else, which helps with the tracking. So you wanna make this kind of fairly big without going too crazy, because the bigger you make it, the slower it will track. I'm gonna turn on normalize over here. Normalize is the computer accounting for slight lighting changes. So if it gets a bit darker in this shot, suddenly it's not gonna go, oh my God, I've lost the tracker. And I think we're ready to go. So if I hit control T and there we go, it's tracked to the end, amazing. Uh, and then obviously we have to go to the point where we started from, and then I'm gonna hit control shift T to track backwards. At this point, it's gonna get lost because it gets really motion blurred. And so I had to hand track this bit uh, for a few frames when the hammer's leaving the frame, but that's fine, uh, it's pretty easy to do. So let's just go through frame by frame and zoom in a bit. You can press G to um, move the tracking marker and just step through with the arrow keys and move it along. It's very simple stuff. Um, you wanna be quite accurate with this if you can. So try and get it sort of in the same place every time. It's a bit tough with motion blur. And then once you get to the point where it's gone off the screen, just don't do it anymore. Don't try and guess where it's gone. Um, that will just be the point where that track ends essentially. So now we have one track that's working. We just need to do this a load more times. So I'm probably gonna fast forward this bit because it's not super interesting. Pro tip, if you can hear me over the noise of the fan, uh, if you hold shift when you're moving stuff around, it will move a lot slower. So it's a bit easier to be more precise. I switched to standing desk, my back was killing me. Um, so I've just finished all the tracking, done a few more tracking points than eight so that we can filter some out. For the real shot, I didn't even do any filtering. The track was so good in the first place that it didn't even require any sort of tweaking really. So the next step is to select all your tracking points, go to the solve tab. I always turn on keyframe. This is basically a where you can define two manual frames in the sequence where there's a lot of parallax. You turn on keyframe, it just does it for you automatically. The computer tries to work it out, which I find usually works pretty well. Then you press solve object motion. It will do some calculating and you'll get a solve error up here. We've got a solve error of 0.61, which is pretty good. I think I got 0.29 on the last one. So this isn't quite as good, which probably means it's a good idea to do some cleaning. We can do it the manual way. If we come up here and turn on uh, info, we can see the tracking error or the solve error of the trackers. So I can see this one's 0.94, that's a bit high. This one's 0.7, that's kind of high. Um, and the others look pretty good. So maybe we'll get rid of that one as well. And then that will bring down the average solve error quite a bit of all of our tracks. What you can also do if you have loads of tracks and you don't want to do it manually because that's a bit of a pain, you can go to the cleanup tab and then put in the solve error that you want all of your tracks to fall below. So if I say, let's go below 0.66, hit clean tracks and it will select all of the ones above that. And then you can just press X and delete them. And if I select them again, do solve object motion. I now don't have enough trackers. So let's do, uh, how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do a couple more and hopefully get a bit of a better solve error. Okay, I've done a few extra ones. Let's try and clean up some of these again. So I'm gonna turn on info. 
let's have a look at some of the main offenders. We've got a 0.98 over here, 0 0.92, 0 0.184, that's a big one. Get rid of this 0.98, and I think those are the worst ones. So if we go solve object motion, 0.6, okay, that's pretty respectable. Let's try and get it below 0.5. There's another 0.98 here. You can go, son. Oh, we've got 0 0.103 there as well. Solve object motion, 0.46, there we go, I'll accept that. So now you've got your track done, you can go to the 3D viewport and add a camera. Click on the camera, go to the constraints tab, add the camera solver constraint. And by default you won't really see anything, but if you come up to the visibility tab and then turn on um, motion tracking, you'll be able to see these points appear in the camera. Now obviously these points are pretty tiny, so, oh god I've lost my camera, that's not good. Um, what you can do, let's just rotate this so it's looking in more of a correct direction as well is go to the camera tab and then just turn down the size so it looks something a bit more like this, which is more in line with what I shot. And if I hit play now, you can see that those points are our tracking markers and they're moving the way the hammer was moving. So now what I'm gonna do is link in my Mjolnir files, which I made in a separate Blender file. And now what you have to do is go into the camera's perspective and line everything up. So it would help if we could actually see what we were doing. So go to the camera tab, add a background image and open the background image sequence that I made earlier. All 72 frames open. So now I'm just gonna grab it and rotate it into position. This takes a little bit of tweaking to get the perspective right and everything. You can go into wireframe mode, sort of get the scale right. Also make sure it kind of actually lines up. So something like that looks pretty good to me. So now what we wanna do, once that's in position on one frame, is select the object that everything's parented to, or if it's just one object, select the object. Then go to the constraints tab, add constraint, object solver. For the object, we're gonna go object because that's what we did in the camera tracking tab. You know, we added an object solve. And then for the camera, you select your camera and suddenly it's pinged off over here and everything's broken. And you think, oh my God, I've done something wrong. Nope, you press set inverse and it pings back. And now if we go into the camera's perspective, you can see that the hammer is tracking perfectly with the live action hammer that I was holding. Then after that, all I did was go to the world tab, add an environment texture like so, and find an HDRI on HDRI Haven that matched this. So we, let's pretend we've hit rendered on that and it's taken about 10 minutes because you've got an amazing GPU. Then we're going to jump into Nuke and do some compositing. Before I start diving into the Nuke stuff, all of this is completely possible in any compositing software. So something like After Effects even has a better lightning tool than Nuke. I had to download a third party one, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's have a look. Up here we have our footage. I did a little bit of cleanup where I frame held uh, the first frame where my hand wasn't in the frame. So I could use this for the bits where the pizza box was sticking out. So all I did was draw a couple of masks and just reveal um, the clean plate over the sections where I didn't want to be able to see the handle underneath. The next thing I put on top of that was the bowling pins, which go over here. This is just a single frame rendered from Blender. Like I said, I rendered, I didn't even render a shadow part for this actually. I just did some <laughs> road to shapes on the floor to make a shadow. Then we have the render of Mjolnir. This is how it looks straight out of Blender. So before and after, that's just literally no grades or anything put on top of the footage. First thing I did is match the black point and make the, you know, the exposure a little bit better. And then there's a couple of other grades making it kind of match the environment colors a little bit better. Then like I explained in the breakdown, I had to roto my hand to go on top of Mjolnir, which goes here. So this is the roto of my hand here. And then all I did to make the shadow was just offset that slightly. So I transformed it and then blurred it a little bit like this. And I used that to grade down the handle of Mjolnir like that. And that's just a really simple, cheap and easy way of doing a contact shadow. On top of that, I've got vector blur, which adds the motion blur for when it's being swung into the frame like this. So that's without motion blur and that's with. And that's pretty much it for just getting the hammer to sit into the scene. Then we move on to the lightning, which is a little bit more complicated. I will say right now, I wanted to do the lightning in Blender and I've since seen a tutorial that's quite good that I probably would have done that if I'd have seen it a month ago. But I don't think there's a particularly good way to make lightning in Blender at the moment. But it would have been really cool to do it that way as well because the lightning could have reflected a bit more in the material of the hammer. But as it was, I just did it in 2D and then kind of hacked all the reflections. So the way I did it is I used a gizmo that I got from, I think it was Nukepedia called X Tesla, which is just like a, a procedural lightning generator. And literally all it does, you add it in, you get two points and you can kind of drag them around and it makes some lightning. After Effects has a very similar tool that's built in and I actually think it's a bit better called CC Advanced Lightning, I think. I used to use it loads when I used to use After Effects. So I, I turned off all of the um, kind of built-in glows and stuff in the lightning. So I just had this kind of white line that had a slight blue fall off towards the end. And then I just did all the glows and stuff myself because I had a bit more control over it. On its own, obviously this looked pretty rubbish because there's no lighting interaction with the hammer. And this is where doing it in Blender would have been quite nice because I could have made these like emissive and then it would have lit up the hammer, but as is the way of life. So what I ended up doing instead is putting the lightning on here and then using just a little rotor shape with a glow on it to kind of add this hotspot onto the hammer. 
it's just a little mask of a circle and then I blurred it a little bit or quite a lot actually and then um, did an exponential glow to give it that kind of intensity um, a little bit more glow on top of that made it blue to match the color of the lightning and then plus that on top of the footage so that's kind of getting there the hotspot kind of beds it in a little bit better and it starts to work a bit nicer and then after that what I did is split out the glossy part of the hammer which is like all the reflections and I graded that part on its own and added some highlights just into that so it'd be like it was just picking up on the reflective areas so that's what this looks like you can see there's some lighting interaction on the handle and some on the actual hammer there and the nice thing about this is it only exaggerates the areas where the reflections would actually pick up so it's not just like an overall grade over the whole thing making it blue it's only adding the highlights into the areas that are reflective so you can see they're picking up in these small pits and stuff quite a bit where they're catching the edges so this is the rotor shapes that i drew to add the blue onto there it's just again kind of a few rotor shapes with a bit of feather on them in a few places so I did that for all the hotspots where the lightning was quite close and then I also did like an overall one that's much bigger that's just kind of the whole face of the hammer um, where the lightning was touching and then that goes back on top so that's what it looks like oh wait um, there we go that's before that's after and when you add all of those things together you get this which I think looks really cool there's a few last minute details like I added some uh, lighting interaction on my fingers here when the bolt goes across the bottom of my hand but essentially that's how this shot was done most of this to be honest just comes from the object track in blender and that's the most tricky part so there we go, that's a tutorial on how to do this shot. The others were very similar, object tracking or hand tracking, but essentially just putting Mjolnir in all the shots. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you want me to do one every week, then let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. As I always say, the project files for all of my videos are available on Patreon for a dollar. So if you want to get all of the files for this, so you'd have to make it yourself and you can just get stuck straight in, you can download them from there. It saves you some work and it helps support the channel, so it'd be greatly appreciated. The next thing is we recently had a Halloween render competition in the Discord group. Someone suggested a couple of weeks ago that we should do a Halloween competition and I said yeah let's go for it. Didn't think that many people would enter but there were some really really good entries in here and so thank you to everyone that entered it was really cool to see your work. But yeah if you're interested in joining the Discord then uh, the link's in the description and it would be cool to see you there. And finally something that I think no one will be expecting. I've heard the requests there's been over 50 people that have asked for it and I've caved in so I'm going to do an Iron Man tutorial series coming very soon. Keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching this video. I'm out.